Well, hey there, freaks. It's your boy Marty here to introduce this week's sponsor. You already know all about them. This week's episode of Tales from the Crypt is brought to you by the Cash App, the number one app in the finance store, excuse me, in the finance section of the app store for the last two years. The first P2P payments app to let you freaks buy Bitcoin. Uh, and now they're also letting you uh, withdraw and deposit Bitcoin on their app. Uh, on top of that, they're they're rolling out BEC32 uh, compatibility. So if you're looking to send straight to Wasabi or to another uh, BEC32 address, uh, you can do that. It's starting to happen for, for users. I imagine it'll be rolled out for everybody. Eventually, on top of that, they have their Boost program, uh, which allows you to customize a debit card. Uh, when you load up your Cash App, your debit card is associated with cashback deals at merchants like Whole Foods, any local coffee shop. Uh, I believe I saw DoorDash on there, uh, Popeyes is on there, a bunch of others are always adding. Uh, and of course, you can always use that savings to stack sats. Uh, and while you're stacking sats, you should spread the word and tell your friends that have not downloaded Cash App yet to use the promo code stacking sats, and they'll get five dollars upon download. Then Square is going to give five dollars to Owls Lacrosse, a charity uh, very near and dear to our heart here at TFTC. I hope you guys enjoy this episode of Tales from the Crypt with Ben Hunt from Epsilon Theory. Uh, and James O'Byrne from Chainco joined us temporarily. Or well, he was there the whole time, but he, he hops on the recording temporarily uh, after the hour mark. This was a great conversation, very humbling, uh, very thought provoking, and I think uh, this is uh, a very interesting one that you guys are going to love. So enjoy. Okay. What is up, freaks? Welcome back to Tales from the Crypt. It's your boy, Marty Bent, coming from the most beautiful studio we've ever seen. We're looking at downtown Manhattan from Midtown. We're uh, in Chain Code Labs offices right now. They're gracious enough to let me and my guest uh, join them today in a conference room. I'm very excited for this conversation. Let's jump right into it. I'm sitting down with the creator of Epsilon Theory, a newsletter and site that views markets through the lens of game theory and history. I'd like to introduce you freaks to Ben Hunt. Ben, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Marty. It's great to be here. It really is. Well, thank you for coming. I'm flattered that you would uh, agree to come sit down I'm with me. I'm flattered that you invited me. Are you kidding? This is, this is super. This well, is really super. this is super for me because uh, as a writer, um, I, I really admire your writing in particular. It's, uh, you do have an incredible way of drawing parallels between nature and markets and, and other things as well. Thank you. Um, and... Yeah, so you've been talking more and more about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency uh, the last few months in particular, in my observation, and uh, just sort of want to jump into your thoughts on the space. Um, I know we have an announcement to make at the end of the episode. We'll talk about <laughs> that as well. But yeah, so today the, the conversation I'm sort of looking to jump into is I want to map out the metagame with you. Uh, sure. Talk about Too Clever by Half, or Bitcoiners mm -hmm. Too Clever by Half, who are the raccoons in the space, and uh what is the battle we have against the state and can it be won just little stuff like that yeah fan, little fan, stuff fan, fan, fantastic well no thanks again for having me marty and you know i i've my, you know my i've done a lot of things in in my you know a series of careers right my, my wife kids i i can't keep a job and and i and i, and I guess that's kind of true uh, you know I, I i started as a you know a professor of political science of, of all oxymorons, you know, way, way, way back in the day. Um, and my, my passion, though, and so just step back a second, you know, political science is this bastard child of history and economics, right? And so I was very much on what I call the science side of political science when I was in grad school and when I started teaching, very much on that economics and econometric side of uh, of, of, of the great academic divide in that discipline. And as I've gotten older, I'm 55 now, right, just to, to date myself a little bit, and, and I've done different things in the, in, the, in the actual world, started a couple of software companies, uh, then got into the investing world. Uh, I've, I've come to appreciate the history side of the equation that I you know, started off with a long time ago. And, and it's that history side, particularly recent history and the history of 
science, the history of technology, and, and the way that that is um, co-opted and, and frankly, more often than not, used against us uh, over, over, you know, really any period of time. You know, that, that's what has really gotten me interested in my latest career incarnation, you know, writing about markets and, 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 and politics, to, to, to really focus on, uh, I'll call it the Bitcoin community, and, and the, whether it's the, the coding, the, the, the elegant code that's embedded in this, this flavor of cryptocurrency or the, the social movement around it. So it's, it, I, I come at this both from a, a, a perspective of, and, and I don't mean to be, um, you know, this isn't supposed to be condescending, so kind of one of you, right? So, so I, I am a coder, right? And it, this, was, this was how I started my career. Uh, and, and I have, you know, lived through, uh, you know, firsthand experiences of seeing these both social movements and technology movements, I'll say, subverted, and 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 so what I'm, why I'm writing about these topics, why I'm so glad to be on on your 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 podcast, is to get a chance to talk about this, uh, not not again to be condescending or to you know pat anybody on the head, but say in 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 my experience, both lived experience and the you know, the, the, the jobs I've had, I think these are the pitfalls to, to, to watch for as this community moves forward. Yes, and it's, um, it's been incredible to see you dive deeper into it because it specifically with your articles, Too Clever by Half, in which you talk about uh, your, your property and it's set up with uh, uh, electric fence for your dogs and the coyotes are almost... Uh, they're leaving their scat around the uh, the borders, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so look, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, I met my wife here in Manhattan, right? And so I was, I was teaching at NYU at the time, uh, and we were, you know, we had our first baby in a the a studio apartment in the, uh, the 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 faculty ghetto down there at uh, um, you know the Washington Square Village, and it was it was literally. For the three of us, it was a 250 foot, 250 square foot studio, right? So, um, my my wife's from Texas. I'm from Alabama. That we're not we're not urban people by nature, right? So, we we started looking for ways to 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 get out of the city, right? And uh, we've got four kids now, and 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 we ended up really kind of out in the woods in in Fairfield County, Connecticut. And, and look, I, I mean, when I say out in the woods, uh, you know, it is Fairfield County, Connecticut, right? So, I, I mean, it's not the Jodes or, you know, when I, when I talk about my farm, right, yeah. yeah. So, you know, if, 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 if I have a bad day on the farm, meaning that I, you know, can't get my tractor running that day, I, you know, I can drown my sorrow, sorrows with an, artisanal mezcal and a, <laughs> and a, and a moose bouche at the local, you know, you know, farm to plate, you know, cafe just down the street. So, so, so I don't, I don't want to overplay this, right? Like that, that, that I'm, you know, working the fields here, but w we have made a decision to, to try to, to move not to the suburbs, but I'll call it the exurbs, right? And where we can have animals uh, that, my daughters take care of. I, I, I take care of the bees and I, and I drive the tractor, right? That, those are my jobs. But all of the other animals we have, the, the, the chickens, the sheep, the goats, the horses, that's, that, that's all on my kids. And, and it, it really does allow us to, I'll say, instill these lessons that I think are so important, um, you know, as, as part of anyone's education. And part of my education was also learning about these animals. And, and in particular, to the, to the point of your, the, the, the article, your, the note you're, you're referring to, it was the, the coyotes that live out in the woods around our farm. And we do have this enormous uh, electric 
fence, you know, the, the invisible fence for our dogs. It covers about five acres. So it's, it's the best life you can imagine for the dogs, right? But the, the truth is, is that domesticated dogs are nowhere near as smart as the, the, the wild coyotes. And so, you know, my, my dogs, I'm, I'm convinced, don't even know that the coyotes are there. The coyotes, though, they, they know where the electric fence boundary is every bit as well as, as my dogs do without having to have suffered any sort of shock or beeping noise or whatever the you know, approach to the, to the fence does for, for, for the dogs. They know it through smell, they know it through behavior, and for the coyotes, it's a constant game of, of territorial aggression against the dogs. Again, my dogs don't even know that this thing's going on, right? It's, it's like pinky in the brain was the mm-hmm. example I used in the note, where the, the coyotes are, they want to rule the world, right? But, but, but you know, my dogs, they, they're just, you know, they, 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 they don't know anything going on. And, and you can tell that the coyotes know the, the demarcation line because occasionally they'll leave their scat just over the line, you know, as a provocation to the, to the, to the dogs. My dogs don't care. <laughs> they, they don't care. And, and to me, that, that, that illustrates so much of what you see about coyotes, which is that they are incredibly smart animals, right? And, and that's why I call, and I, I think of myself as a coyote, Right. And, and, and so many of the people in this this Bitcoin community are, are, are coyotes. They're smart. Right. And, and, and when they're if there's an immediate game to be played, uh, like, OK, I'm going to you know, do some territory game with this you know, puppy dog over here. They're going to win. They're going to win. The, the problem for coyotes, though, is is that they are often not seeing the larger game that they are immersed in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what happens a lot in our community is that people will move out from the city out to the woods because they want to be close to nature. But then when they, and it's usually their you know, small child, and I, I get this, when they actually confront nature, a coyote is walking you know, along the, 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 the outskirts of, of, their, of their property, you know, they freak out. They freak out. Na- nature is something to be observed and something to be safe. But when nature has, you know, red fangs and claws, you know, then that that's a no, no, that that's not what I meant by nature, mm-hmm. right? So, so what 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 always happens in these these circumstances is that the homeowner will try to scare away the the, the coyote. And the, the, the prescribed course of action is to get an old coffee can, fill it with coins, and shake it vigorously <laughs> at, the, at the coyote. That'll scare it off. Right? Nonsense. Mm-hmm. Total, total nonsense. Right? So the, the, the coyote, and we've had this experience, or my, my wife had this experience. The coyote and it, the, the, the pack, and there'll be, it was, I think it was, this was a female, looked up at my wife, this weird biped, with some clanking noise coming off the end of one of her paws and, and looked up and said, are you, what, what are you kidding? You know, you know, that, that's, this is supposed to be a threat. What are you, are you joking? And, and the coyotes left, but, but not because they were scared, right? They, 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 they won the game. They, they exercised their dominance. Basically the coyote basically stared down my wife and you could almost, you know, you know, SMFH, right? You know, mm-hmm. just kind of sauntered <laughs> off saying, you know, I'm leaving, but it's because you bore me, you know, not because you're scaring me. And the problem with that is, is that the, the human also realizes they lost that game of dominance. And the, the next step is not to shake that coffee can full of coins, but is to call the animal control officer of the town. And, and, and I know the animal control officers of, of the towns around us, and they're, without exception, they're really good people. Mm-hmm. The last thing in the world they want to do is to, 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 to kill a coyote. But that's their job when the townspeople with their pitchforks and you know, their domesticated visions of nature say, nope, the coyote's got to go. And, and that to me is... I've seen that process play out so, you know, twice in my lifetime now 
when it comes to uh, what I'll call coyotes in the financial world. What, uh, what examples in particular? Well, the best example examples? is is around uh, uh, mortgage-backed securities, mm-hmm. right? So the 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 proximate cause of the the, the great financial crisis of two thousand eight, early part of two thousand and nine, was the popping of a bubble in mortgage-backed securities. It was a ten trillion dollar asset class comprised of what will what are called non-agency mortgage-backed securities. So the, 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 the agencies are Fannie Mae, right, Freddie Mae, but, but Fannie Mae is the big one, meaning that an agency mortgage is, is also called a conforming mortgage, right? So it's, it's a, you, you get a loan from Fannie Mae, it, it's for a small amount, you've got very standardized you know, requirements, you've got to put down 20% or get uh, you know, mortgage insurance if you put down less than that, but it's, it's, it's got very set rules to it. But what happened, the innovation that occurred uh, in this country and then spread out to other countries, but like Ireland is a, is a good example, but, but it's particularly found in, in the United States, was that, that, that banks realized, you know, maybe we can kind of lighten up the rules a little bit. Right? So this, this got into the, the category of what we would call the uh, alt a loans mm-hmm. you know often called liar loans right which is basically you know just just tell us how much money you make and and, and what you qualify for and the, the 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 reason this worked right was the invention of a of a very clever piece of math right called the the the, the gaussian copula right and and it's it's used in portfolio construction and it's basically used as the uh, the proof, the proof that you can uh, slice up these um, these pools of mortgages, and if you slice them up in the proper way, I'll describe that in a second. Then the actual risk of failure in your slice of that pool of mortgages is. Uh, is, is, is actually pretty small, right? Or at least that we can price it effectively such that the, the, the return you get from owning a particular slice of that pool of mortgages reflects the, 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 the fairly minimal risk that you're taking on, mm-hmm. right? So this allowed then banks to do two things. One, it allowed them to lend out money to make mortgages, right? that weren't conforming, that didn't have to go through Fannie Mae, that didn't have to go through the agencies. But then that's not enough, right? Because if, if a bank just makes the loan, then it's on the bank's balance sheet, right? What then the bank has to do is you have to pool them together and then sell those loans to the big institutional investors, right? And mm-hmm. so that, that's what we mean by a mortgage-backed security. Mm-hmm. So the securitization of these loans became that ten trillion dollar asset class and would you say particularly the tranching of the the securities that, too? That, that's right because yeah. you've got different buyers for uh these these pool these securities right you've got an insurance company let's say might want to have oh i want the safest possible you know tranche or cut of this the the triple a rated tranche of this right um and, and i'm willing to take less of a you know coupon or interest rate for that but but i I want the safest Mm -hmm. and other people have different risk appetites and the more risk you have the the more uh interest it pays right yeah but but see but but here's the problem it goes back to that piece of math right the the gaussian copula it wasn't that the math was wrong right the math is right the math is exactly right behaviorally though it was applied in a way that had one fundamental assumption and that fundamental assumption was that it was impossible to have a nationwide decline in home prices in the United States. Right? Now, now that assumption, you would never know it. It's not like the all caps boilerplate that you get at the, in small print at the bottom of a contract. Mm-hmm. Right? It's embedded in the construction of the securities around this. Right? 
and, and you have to speak the language of math, right, to, and have the experience of how it's being applied by the, the, the banks who are doing this to say, oh, wait, so this, this entire edifice, $10 trillion worth of stuff, is like, a, I like to call it like an inverted pyramid, an upside down pyramid, where the point of the pyramid rests on this one assumption that you cannot have a nationwide decline in home prices. And if that assumption is violated, it all comes undone. It all comes undone. And that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. That's why, exactly what happened. How do you think, why do you think that assumption slipped in there? Do you, is it just because the environment that the, well, well, the no, Fed was? That, that, that assumption was there because that assumption was absolutely correct in the for the last 70 years. Mm hmm Right, it, you you would have to go back to the Great Depression, and even then, even then, is it's 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 hard to really know because you we really didn't keep the sort of records, right? But since we started keeping records of this stuff, really after World War II, and you you see this throughout the investment world, that we believe that there are these permanent, essentially laws of market behavior based not on a perfect knowledge of the history of finance, but based on, oh, we started measuring this stuff in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. So if it's been this way since the 1950s, then it must be true forever and ever, amen. Right? So that's why it was there. It wasn't that, it, again, it was wrong. It was that it was this embedded belief simply because that's the way it's been for the last few decades. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, you see this happen all the time throughout the world of money, right? That, that we assume something is, is like a natural law of behavior only because we've measured it for some period of time. It, it's as if it doesn't exist or behavior didn't exist before you were able actually to measure it. And it's part of this, again, I'll call it the, the over scientificization of investments that really took root uh, after World War II in the 1950s. And it's, it's the sort of thing that is now, it's become what I like to call the zeitgeist or the, the water in which we swim. We don't even know that we're doing it because it just, it's, it's, it's what we've always known. So it's, it's imperceptible to us. Yeah, no, that's um, a huge theme on this podcast in particular is the fact that we're born and potentially uh, a s historical time that will be looked back as an anomaly in monetary history in particular. Um, and well, well, but see, here's, here's what's not an anomaly. Here's what is constant and eternal, mm -hmm. and that is fear and greed. Mm -hmm. right? Fear and greed are the eternal truths of anything to do with money. Right? That and power, right? the, 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 the state. Because cause here's the... Here's the punchline of this story about the, the, the financial market and the collapse of mortgage-backed securities in, in, in 2008 and 2009. The punchline is that most of the coyotes I knew who were involved in that, they got taken out and shot. Mm -hmm. They got taken out and shot. So, so Bear you know, Stearns in particular was yeah, one yeah, of them? Yeah, Bear Stearns was the first one, right? So, so, so Bear Stearns, which frankly, you know, what... They were involved in the, the uh, I'll call it the, the, the fund side, the investing side. They, they weren't really a, a mortgage originator. What, they weren't like Wells Fargo, right? Mm -hmm. So Wells Fargo would, would, would make the loans and then they would securitize them. You know, they would turn them into these pools of mortgages and they'd sell them off. Bear Stearns was involved in the, the selling back and forth and they, they ran a couple of funds that you know, invested in these things. Uh, but, but Bear Stearns was essentially a, an investment bank made up of coyotes. Uh, smart guys, right? Uh, um, you know, any investment bank, and I'll talk about who, what a raccoon is in a second. Any investment bank is going to have a few raccoons scattered around. But, 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 but basically, Bear Stearns was a, a group of coyotes. Kind of think of them as like cowboys, mm -hmm. right? And they got... In, the, in, in March of 2008, well, April of 2008, late March, early April of 2008, Bear Stearns was taken out into the street and shot in the head as an example for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the narrative at the time was that Bear Stearns was essentially a rogue actor 
that in the, the, the phrase, the, the catchphrase after Bear Stearns was eliminated and you know, sold for parts to, to, to J.P. Morgan, literally sold for parts, right? So mm -hmm. the, the, the Bear Stearns office building, which is like two blocks from us here, right, on the other side of Grand Central, that was the crown jewel when, when, when J.P. Morgan, when J.P. Morgan, quote unquote, bought, you know, for, for a, a song, Bear Stearns, the building they bought, which is now J.P. Morgan's main building, right over here, was worth far more than, than, than what, you know, Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan paid. But the but the this it was they were they were the the sacrificial lamb right and and the mantra at the time was systemic risk is off the table, of course the systemic risk was there from the nationwide decline in home prices mm -hmm. from from the the puncturing of this bubble the the collapse of that upside down ten trillion dollar pyramid, but the the effort is always made to do a few show trials and executions of clever coyotes. And that's the, the first step in, in government trying to get control over a, a technology, in this case, Gaussian copulas and mortgage-backed securitization, that threatens to uh, not dismantle, but, 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 but threatens the stability of a political order, right, mm -hmm. as the Great Recession clearly did. You know, later, they had to have more coyotes taken out in the street and shot. So you had to have Lehman taken out in the street and shot. And, and, and believe me, there were, there were, again, raccoons, right? People who, who are not, I would say, well-meaning like most coyotes are, uh, but were really just, you know, and we could talk about some of those people, right? Particularly at the, 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 the helm of Lehman. But, the, the, but the, the, the crushing of Lehman Brothers and then the bailing out of other firms uh, like Goldman Sachs, like Morgan Stanley, it's all part and process of both the uh, co-opting of coyotes. It's all part of coyote control. Mm -hmm. You've got to take some out in the street and shoot them in the head. You've got to relocate others. You've got to domesticate others into puppy dogs, mm -hmm. right? But, but that is what happens. And, and if you are one of those coyotes who, as most coyotes are, we're, we're independent, we're, we, we, we want to do our own thing, you're likely to get shot in the head and you won't see it coming, but it'll happen. And the, the survivors, and this is true for, for so many of the, I'll call it the, the hucksters and the con men around mortgage-backed securities, w people I call raccoons, another farm animal. You know, I respect the coyotes. I can't stand raccoons. Mm -hmm. right? The raccoons are not shot in the head by the government, right? The, the, the the state really doesn't care about raccoons because they're not that clever. Right. Right. What the state cares about is coyote control. Uh, and and the, they, honest to God, I, I think intentionally allow a number of raccoons to, 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 to stick around. Right. right? But, so they don't, they don't really care about that. You saw that in, in the, the, the mortgage-backed security collapse. Honest to God, you see some of the same raccoons, right, who were hawking, uh, you know, mortgage funds and then, you know, you know, come back, for, who, were, who were there trying to take people's money around mortgage-backed securities. They're here in the crypto world, too. Oh. It's the same guys. And, yes, they're always guys. I have a couple right? on yeah. the top of my mind that I'm thinking yeah. of right now. Yeah. And, and, and it's so important, I think, for any – community like the, the the bitcoin the crypto community to 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 recognize that there there are raccoons so and, and to you know to speak out yeah so i'm not uh sure how abreast you are of the 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 intricacies of so you have like the overarching overarching quote-unquote crypto landscape and then uh i would say let's just de-alienate and bifurcate by two you have uh "Quote unquote crypto," and then you have Bitcoiners. I would argue. Is that? Did you say that's fair? There's probably some room in between too. But Bitcoiners, I would say, are recognize this. Crypto funds, in particular, are something that um, don't make sense to me. You have a perverse incentive to do thing, invest in things like ICOs and things that may not have value at the end of the day. And it, it is um, there is definitely a divide in the overarching community that sort of separates it into Bitcoin versus crypto. Well, 
so, so this is a good topic for conversation because like I said, so, so I want to push back on that a little bit mm -hmm. right? because I, I'll say from my perspective from not being in the you know the internal wars in in the community when when I when I look at it from a, a and I am a sympathetic outsider right I am sympathetic to what I would characterize as the positive energy uh, I'm sympathetic of, of, the, of the larger crypto community. I, I am sympathetic to coyotes, right? Very, very sympathetic. I despise raccoons. Right? And, and, and my, my, my feeling about crypto and, and Bitcoin, and Bitcoin has been colored by the fact that as an outsider, I see the, 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 the raccoons who have glommed on to, 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 to Bitcoin, right? I, I, I hear you on the whole ICO thing, right? And, and this, this gets actually at the, the underlying thread of my concern is, 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 is too weak of a word. My, anyway, let me back up one more second. So, so I'm a big comic book fan, mm -hmm. right? And, and um, one of my favorite characters is is one of the, the the inhumans right so this is you know black bolt and you know medusa and this, they, they've been around for forever and they were kind of in the uh really in the link with the fantastic four mm -hmm. uh that that's where the inhumans you first saw, saw them and, and and the like but there there is one of the inhumans so the inhumans are they, they they're exposed to this chemical and you've got this this you know gene that when you're exposed to this chemical gas it releases some power right so 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 every each member of the inhumans has a power right? and they, they can be weird powers you, you know or they, or they can be a single you know amazing power right so the inhuman that i always uh i, I think it's the most powerful and, and 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 i always had the most interest in was uh, his name was karnak mm-hmm Right, so, so, so Karnak's power is to see the flaw in all things. Right, that's his, that's his great, that's his superpower. What's his superpower? He can see the flaw in all things. And, and, and I will tell you that, that I think the flaw in Bitcoin, and, and I've been out there talking about this, is, is, is the same flaw that you see with coin offerings and 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 you know and, and alt coins and the like right it is the contesting with the state for control over money mm -hmm. right i i i don't i i know why it's there right because the, the here's the other thing about coyotes right we're smart we're smart we're problem solvers we're we we we're, we're game players we're also all a little on the make mm -hmm. we are we are right i, I want to make money yeah right? I, I don't mind saying anyone that no right? oh. and, and and every coyote i've ever met has that same feeling so so i get it right you've got this clever and, and i and again i'm not being disparaging when i say clever i mean, I mean to me this is high praise right i, I call bitcoin art mm -hmm. right it's 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 elegant art i would right? agree and 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 here is the opportunity Oh, you know, it's not just cool. It can be money, and I can make money with it, right? And and when you start dealing in the business of money, right, you are going to a attract every raccoon in a thousand mile radius. Mm -hmm. They are going to come running at you, right? And you're also going to attract the state the government and the, the the wheels of government grind slow but they grind exceedingly well there may not be as many clever coyotes in government but they will outlast you right they are the animal control officer and 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 so i hear you on the the divide right between bitcoin and other coins mm -hmm. i hear you right and and the but from an outsider i see enormous cleverness in some of the alternative coins and the and the 
the problems they are trying to solve. And they share with Bitcoin, I think, the fatal flaw that they are expressing these clever solutions in the form of money. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you think Bitcoiners almost abrupt confrontation with the state and its control over money is our, the biggest flaw of the system? Um, and what, so what would like an alternative be to uh, attacking this problem this way? Because a uh, big quote that goes around the Bitcoiner circles is Hayek's, we're never going to fix money until we find a sly roundabout way to take it from the hands of the government. And Bitcoiners would be, uh, I'm a strong believer in that Bitcoin is the first opportunity that we've seen in a while to do that. And um, if done correctly, it could, could be done successfully as well. Well, I would say that there are, first of all, I, again, I'll, I'll back up a second, right? So, so when I say that I am sympathetic to the goals of self-sovereignty and autonomy, particularly on autonomy of mind, mm -hmm. saying I'm sympathetic to that doesn't do it justice, right? That is what I'm all about. It's visceral in you. That's, that's right, right? So, yes. so, but I do want to focus on that, that notion of an autonomy of mind, mm -hmm. right? Of, of my identity, right? Now, is, is money and the, 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 the medium of exchange for my commercial transactions in the world, is that part of my identity? Sure. Sure, it is. It's, it's not a big part of my identity, though. Right? It's, it's, it's really not. When, it, when, I, when I think about what my, my, my autonomy of mind means, it is my independence to think what I want to think, to say what I want to say, to say it to who I want to say it to, uh, to not... To not just to be censored directly, and I, and I love the fact that, 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 that Bitcoin is a censorship resistant technology, mm -hmm. right? And, and, it, and it is, frankly, my, my biggest gripe, not in gripe is too weak a word, it's, it's, it's the, the Trojan horse that, that, that Libra and, and, and its kin, you know, provide they're they're not censorship resistant they are censorship embracing mm -hmm. right it's, yes. it's it's a to me this is a means of again the state co-opting the clever coyotes right but 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 hear me out on this i i think that when i think about what are the important problems of distributed trust to solve because that that's those are the if there's a common thread amongst the problems that Bitcoin and all kinds are trying to solve are problems of distributed trust, mm -hmm. right? There are so many problems of distributed trust that I want to solve that have nothing to do with money, right? That, that, that have to do with taking back my data, right? From everything from where I travel, right? Who I speak to, you know, what I speak about. Because right now we're in a world where it's not just the, the, the censorship of you know, the corporations or, or the state, it's the self-censorship that, mm -hmm. that I find to be the most pernicious and, and widespread aspect. We, we, we censor ourselves because it, in the same way we talked about how we can't imagine a world where we're not measuring something and that that's the end all and be all of, of, of what we see in financial world. It's the same way in our, in our individual world. We can't imagine a world, right, where we, um, where we don't cheer, where the, the zeitgeist is not for what I like to call kind of yay capitalism, mm -hmm. right? Or, or um, you know, well, of course we have, you know, thousands of soldiers in Afghanistan, right? You know, when have we not had that, right? It's just, it, it, we, we take this as again the water in which we swim and 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 i want to use these distributed trust solving technologies to find a way to to weave together humans and what i like to call packs 
so that we can have these conversations so that we don't self-censor ourselves. I, I, when I think about what is possible in this world, because I am still a believer in the, 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 the small L liberal virtues of, 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 you know, of freedom and liberty, mm -hmm. right? And the freedom to express ourselves and create these things. When, it, when I see what's possible in these, these, these grassroots, uncensored and unself-censored movements like, like uh, maker fairs, right? Mm -hmm. where, you, where you get kids and you know, anyone kind of coming out there and just building shit, right? That, that, right, that's the engine for a healthy society. And, 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 and that's where I want to see these, these, these technologies applied uh, rather than on the creation of money. Mm -hmm. what, uh, so I would argue that money would be the first thing that you need to be distributed if you're going to, so if you're talking like a, a course of action to get um, to the future that you're describing where you're, you're distributed, you're holding your own data, and actually all this stuff's going on in parallel, like uh, people are working on private data servers that, that you control and stuff like that and can uh, basically release data on your behalf or when you, when you please and they're not pulling it from you. It's a push system like Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You're pushing your data out. It's not being pulled from you. Um, but I, like, and a lot of Bitcoiners would argue too, you need to take control of, of money to, to help almost defund the, the expansion of these, let's focus on surveillance so, tech and then, yeah. um, and so that's a big, so, so what all coyotes tell themselves is that they can do well by doing good. Okay. Right. So, so, and, and this isn't just for Bitcoin, right? Everywhere I go in finance and investing the 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 and it's not necessarily a lie right but it's not the whole truth mm -hmm. right we we tell ourselves oh yeah this is going to be accomplishing this good thing and and look I, as a as an extra bonus there's a pot of gold here for me mm -hmm. right i'm gonna i'm gonna do well by doing good mm -hmm. and the 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 big good that 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 i i I hear, and again, don't just sympathize with, I believe in the, in the positive energy of this community is the notion of, of res, I'll call it resistance against the seeping control over our, our not just our transactions, but our, literally our, our minds, right, that, that, that governments and, co and, and corporations have. I get that, right? And I think that there is possible to have a revolution. But 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 let me let me give you a, a, the story. It's my favorite story mm -hmm. about about revolution. And, and I say this. It's it's a Bible story, and I'm telling you this. I'm not religious at all, not at all, right? Um, Bible's still a good book. I, I'm just not. I'm mm. just not. But but you want to read about resistance. Right, so, 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 so read the New Testament, right? So that, mm -hmm. that is a book of resistance. Right? And, and so this revolutionary, this guy, you know, Jesus Christ, right? He was there and, and, the, and the narrative was, okay, he's, he's going to overthrow the king, mm -hmm. right? So, so he's there to, to, to do the revolution. And, and so, you know, these... I don't know who the, the counterpart of, of this would be, be be today, right? But but the the these bankers come to him, the Pharisees come to him, and and they say they basically ask Jesus a question about about taxes, right? They they hand him a gold coin and say, hey, you know, I, I hear you're gonna, you know, overthrow the government. You know, what what should we do about you know? Maybe we just shouldn't pay our taxes, right? And and so. Jesus sees the trap, right? So, so he sees, you know, the meta game here is to overthrow, mm -hmm. right? But if you play that, the game that's right there in front of you, if you say, yeah, hell yeah, you know, you know, stop paying your taxes, right? That, you know, forget that, mm -hmm. right? Then you're you're going to be, and this is what always happens, right? Some of you are going to be taken out in the, sh the street and shot in the head. Others of you are going to be co-opted mm -hmm. with some sort of bailout, right? And, and the whole thing is just going to end up empowering the state. It's going to become a state religion and a state revolution, right? 
And so what Jesus said is, of course, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, render unto God that which is God's. Because what, what, what Jesus was saying, and again, I'm not saying this as a religious story, because I'm not, right? What he's saying is that the revolution doesn't come from storming the treasury and refusing to pay your taxes, right? You, you can go that route if you want to, mm -hmm. but he's saying the real revolution comes in your heart and my heart and that other guy's heart over there. That's where the revolution is. And that was true 2,000 years ago. It is true today. The way we make a revolution, right, is not to take up arms against a warring state. The way we make a revolution is bird by bird, person by person, group by group, pack by pack, family by family, child by child, and you work on yourself, you work in your community, and, and that's, that is how these things start. It's, it's, it's very frustrating to hear that message because this is the work not of a few years, this is the work of a few lifetimes, mm -hmm. right? Th 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 this change isn't gonna happen in my lifetime, and I'm okay with that, because this is how one makes lasting change, and it's the only thing that ever has. No, and I, I would agree, that's, um, Bitcoin in particular, it's like, I talk about this on the podcast a lot, like, I have like a seven generation mindset when you think of it, like what can you do today to make the seventh generation ahead of you better off? And I think Bitcoin, I think we're talking about revolution. I think it's a necessary, maybe not Bitcoin in particular, but we need a revolution of some sorts to take back the power of the individual. Because again, we were born in this anomaly. We were born at an inflection point, right? With the internet, the onset of the internet and mm -hmm. the exchange of information and values. And uh, the last big inflection point before the internet was probably the printing press 500 years ago. And, and so we um, and I can argue the Industrial Revolution and stuff like that, but in terms of information sharing, the, the printing press was probably the last big one. And just trying to react to being born in this inflection point and sort of uh, applying anarchanisms of the Industrial Age to the Digital Age, um, it, we're sort of finding out in the first iteration of the Internet, the first 30, 40 years of the Internet, maybe it's not architected correctly and it may be necessary to have a revolution to take back our power before the whole Chinese surveillance state is is uh, sort of ex exported to the rest of the world. Well, I tell you, Marty, I think there are absolutely ways to use, uh, and I'll, 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 I'll call it more just distributed ledger technology. The, the, the notion of, of these technologies to solve distributed trust questions, I, I think, are, are absolutely at the heart of where we should all be working, again, to preserve what I'm going to call the, the small L liberal virtues. Mm -hmm. what, what, what I will tell you now from, from this most recent career and, and, and a lifetime of studying this stuff when it comes to the world of, of financial innovation is that outside of finance, I'm, I'm, I'm with you a thousand percent on... on on the, the, the power, both for, for, for good and for bad, and so let's make it for good, of, of technological innovation. When it comes to the business of money, there, there are only two innovations, right? There are new ways of securitizing something, and, and, that, and, and I know people get upset about this, but, but, but it's true, so, so Bitcoin as money is a securitization of code. I, I'm, I'm going to make that argument, and we can all argue about it, and everybody can can, can look at me weird, but but I'm, I'm going to stick with that, right? Right. So hang, hang on a second. The the other innovation in finance is a new way to lever something, a new way to borrow money on something, right? So it's securitization and it's leverage. There's nothing new in the financial world. Right. It, it, it really is the eternals of fear and greed, state control over money, and new ways of securitizing something or new ways of leveraging something. So that's why I want to take the money part, the finance part, out of these elegant technologies to solve problems of distributed trust. 
because so long as it is embedded within questions of money and finance, it's going to be fear and greed, it's going to be raccoons as far as the eye can see, and it's going to be whoever Caesar's men are at the time, right, up your ass all the time. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and there, there are such important, not just important, existential issues for our own autonomy and the autonomy of our children that need to be solved. You know, you mentioned about the surveillance state and ways of, of finding censorship resistant, self censorship resistant means of expressing ourselves and, and knowing our identity and expressing our autonomy that have nothing to do with money. And that's why I'm so <sighs> Karnak like, right? When, when, when I say that the flaw here is the insistence that it has to be focused on money. Well, what would you say to the fact that money may be needed to create the incentive to create these distributed systems? Because Bitcoin, the token, is the incentive that makes the distributed r- system work in this case. So, so, so I'd, I'd, I'd point you to other, uh, I'll, I'll call them distributed networks. So, so my best example would be like Wikipedia, right? Mm-hmm. So, so to, to me, Wikipedia, which which works, which which has to solve a distributed trust problem, right? Right? How do you how do you edit? How do you keep adding to the to the to the to the, to the, to the wiki here? I think Wikipedia has done more to advance humanity, frankly, and and, auto- and an autonomy of mind and spirit than I, I I'm hard pressed to think of anything that comes close. Hard pressed to think of anything that comes close, right? Wikipedia is not based on a coin, right? Right. The, the, the incentive structure for, for, for adding to, for using it and the like, is not based on a, 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 a coin. But theoretically, it could be shut down, right? It's not distributed in the sense that um, there's different nodes creating that information. Somebody... C- I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, right? Mm-hmm. But, so, so, but, but you don't... <laughs> one of the reasons why you have to, I believe, why you have to have so much precautions over like a you know, 50% plus one hack or something like that is because you are dealing with money. That's why I think that, that I'll, I'll call it kind of, not that anyone wants weak security, right, in, in, in forms of kind of distribution of and sharing of, 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 of nodes so that it becomes resistant, but so much of the protections you have to build in to the, the Bitcoin infrastructure are because it's about money. Mm-hmm. And people want to steal money. Somebody wants to steal you know, a, a, a wiki article about, you know, the, you know, Justinian reforms? I, I, I don't think so, right? Right there. Th- th- your, your point about incentives are, is exactly right. But, but, but in the sense that incentives also work both ways, mm-hmm. right? They're incentives to break into steel, right? They're incentives for the raccoons that get immersed in something that are not there if it's extracted from money. So, so uh, all I'm saying is that, is that, we have such a, again, existential need for our children, for ourselves, to, to, to build these forms of resistance in things that, frankly, are much more important to my autonomy and identity than money and transactions. Mm-hmm. But because we go down a path of, like all coyotes do, oh, hey, I can make a lot of money here. We, we get immersed in this, this world of money. And then we, we, we tell ourselves, oh, no, no, it's going to be okay. We're actually doing good by making money with this. And, and what I'm saying is you've got to separate it. it. It's a hard thing to say, right? And I know it doesn't make anybody happy, but it, it, it has been true for not just 2,000 years, you know, but for, for forever that to, to achieve real revolution right it, it it can't come when it's embedded in money mm-hmm. hmm. i'm sorry i feel no. sorry when i say this stuff no no i'm not i'm just trying to think here like so it, trying to extract money away from bitcoin james o'burn is is uh in the studio with us and i'm looking at him uh to bounce stuff off but so if we abstract money away from bitcoin at the end of the day it's just a distributed system that lets you know what happened when um and it, and it works yes at doing that it's 
it's and, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's 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 so like I say, uh, elegant that 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 I'm just I'm in awe of it, and 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 I. And I love, like I say, this this has been the change in, in, in my personal, I'll call it evolution around around Bitcoin in particular and in crypto more generally, is that I've come to appreciate that creative, positive energy that exists here. Because these these are people, most of whom are, you know, younger than I am, right? And and they really want to change the freaking world. So let's change the freaking world. Mm-hmm. And, and, and all, all I am saying is that if you insist on doing it through a means of money, um, you are going to be thwarted. You, so, are, you so, just are. So let's get into that. How is the state going to co-op Bitcoin? Like you think, so you well, talk so, about the so, nudging state. You th- right, so, the, so they don't do it with a, a, a jackboot, right? I mean, you could, right? I, I mean, I guess if, if you're in the case of China, you can, right? And, and so, okay, we can't get at the code, so we're going to, you know, shut down exchanges, right? So we're going to make it impossible to, if you stay, you know, physically in our country, we're going to make it impossible for you to do anything with it. It's just going to sit there, and no, we can't touch it, and it's safe, and it's yours, right? But... Go ahead. It's like it's like burying a gold bar in your backyard. All right, go ahead, knock yourself out. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, so, so that that that's one way, right? But but I say the far more effective way, and and, and it's the way that is I see happening right now, is not with the the, the jackboot, right? Not with the the overtly authoritarian control, but again, it's the control over narrative and it's the ability to 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 literally force people to self-censor themselves to create a narrative and, and we all know it's coming we all know it's coming that oh you you you're a proponent of bitcoin you well i mean you support when, when, white when, supremacists right, that's well, what all the people well, well, right. are saying or, or when when so have you have you stopped supporting isis mm-hmm. you know when did you stop beating your wife right because we all know right we all know that drug lords and terrorists that they're the users well, of, of, of these coins. You know that, right? Oh, I know that. But they they also use the U.S. dollar as well. And well, of course they do. But but that but that's not the story, so, right? Those aren't the show trials. Well, that's so that's the battle. That that's Bitco- your story. That's the battles that Bitcoiners against the uh, the nudging state are, are in right now. And I would argue Bitcoiners are better at framing the narrative. Um, or oh, come, you're in you're in your echo chamber. That's when true. You say that. That's you're true. You're in your echo chamber when you say that. And and. Again, it's bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. It is a bullshit narrative. Right? And what is in particular? Oh, that 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 Bitcoin and crypto in particular are are like a, you know, the tool, right? That they 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 are criminal because it's it's oh. it's it can be used by criminals. Yeah. To your point, so can cash, right? So can mm-hmm. cash. But also to the point. That's why governments want to get rid of paper currency as well. Oh, yes. Right? But see, and this is where it's going. And this is why I see Libra as this Trojan horse. I call it the Spanish prisoner con in the, in, in the note I wrote, which is that the alternative that's going to be presented, the stick is the narrative, oh, if you're for crypto, you, you must be for terrorists, right? You must be a terrorist supporter. That's the stick. The carrot is, oh, look over here. Here's a here's here's an electronic, you know, cryptocurrency, quote unquote, that is in partnership with government, mm-hmm. right? It 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 it'll feel like oh I'm you know I'm mod I'm you know using you know crypto when it's when it's just a, a an electronic form of fiat currency. Yeah, but you still can't. So one of my favorite stories that I like to tell people when explaining Bitcoin to help them get an understanding is my wife works here in Midtown uh, and she works with a bunch of Venezuelans actually. She's in advertising and a lot of her coworkers are Venezuelan and uh, one of her coworkers in particular, uh, her dad was back in Caracas and fell ill with cancer and they couldn't get money. So like in a, in a world where Libra takes over and wanted to send money from Manhattan to Caracas, probably wouldn't be able to do that with Libra, but she did it with Bitcoin. She wasn't able to PayPal or send money down there so she bought some bitcoin sent it to a personal wallet and then sent it to her family in venezuela and so what i see in that is like the market routing all around these sanctions and sort of the nudging state trying to 
clamp down on this and do you do you see that use case so, so marty here's what's happening here's what's happening and, and 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 again i'm just i'm just telling you this as a as a sympathetic outsider looking at this right you are being put in the same position that i'll use this phrase gold bugs have been put in for the last 50 years mm -hmm. right this is you are being given a role you you are being it, it, it's like it's like the it's like the United States government is the, um, you know, the casting director for a play, mm -hmm. right? And they're saying, oh, Mr. Bitcoin, you know, we, we, we've heard a lot about you and we'd love to have you come in and read for a role in the, in the, in the play we're producing. It's a long running play. You're going to love it. You'll be on stage. Wouldn't you like to read for this role? You'll be one of us. And, and you'll say, well, of course I'll read for the role. You're reading for the role that gold has played for the last 60 years, right? This quote unquote store of value, right? Which is, which is outside of the, the, the fiat system. And I am telling you right now, that is a miserable place to live. Oh, uh, believe me, I don't want to turn into the gold bugs of the digital age, even though it's easy to see how that can happen. Right? Because, yeah. you know, it's the, sorry, you know, I'm old enough to remember when, I'm old enough to remember when, right? The, the notion of Bitcoin was, oh, I'm going to buy my, you know, cold brew coffee at, you know, Starbucks or whatever, you know, fruit fruit place I bought my cold brew coffee from here in Manhattan this morning with, with Bitcoin. And I know I said, oh, we can't do Bitcoin, we'll do BCH or we'll do whatever, right? But, but that whole narrative around Bitcoin, that's gone, right? So now the narrative around Bitcoin is, oh, it's digital gold. It's a store of value. Tell me you don't hear that everywhere you go. Right? And, and it's right. It's correct. But what I'm telling you is you are being, and, and honest God, this is intentional. Pigeonholed. Pigeonholed is way too kind, mm -hmm. right? You are being ghettoized. Mm -hmm. you, in, 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 the, in the original meaning, the true and terrible meaning of the word ghetto, right? Look over here. We've built these wonderful apartment complexes for you. This is the neighborhood you're going to live in from now on. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, come on in. It's, it's wonderful. You're going to love it. Right? And you're going to hate it. Right? Because, because you're, 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 you're never getting out. And that's, that's, that's the way in which you get, again, co-opted. Right? And there'll be occasional show trials, like I say, of the, the coyote that has to get taken out on the street and shot from time to time. You'll have a lot of raccoons who, just as they have in Gold World, have just stolen, stolen from you, mm -hmm. right? W will you be able to make money trading Bitcoin? Absolutely. Just like, you know, there are a lot of people who trade, you know, commodities and, you know, precious metals, right? It's a living. It's a living. And you'll have these, these kind of stories like, Oh, this is, this is, you know, this helped, you know, you know, I, the, 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 the uncle of my friend survive in some country, right? But, but you, are, you, are being, you are being ghettoized when, when, when this is happening. Well, I love that phrase, being ghettoized, and I, I would agree. I would, we're def the, the state is definitely starting to frame the narrative, especially the last week in particular with Trump, Powell, and Mugin coming out. And, and talking about this, obviously, they want to have an opinion or getting ahead of it with a certain narrative. Um, but with that being said, we have confidence in governments at all time low. We have uh, we have a lot of inequality in the world that, that I would argue is driven by monetary policy largely. And I would believe you would agree with that to an extent. Of, of, of course I would. Mm -hmm. Of course I would. So, but, 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 but Marty, revolution of the type you're talking about doesn't come from you know, blogs and in an op-ed post, right? It, it comes from, and, and this is awful, but you, this is true in Venezuela and true in a place where you have real revolutions, right? It comes from freaking guns and bullets and people dying, mm -hmm. right? Oh. And, 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 you know, if you think that that's what, you know, the Bitcoin community has signed up for, right? It, 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 it ain't. It just ain't, right? It, it, and instead, you, you end up being... The, the, the grumpy old man, like gold, like you see in gold world, right? Sure. You say, oh, we'll be, we'll be right eventually. Right? And, and then you spend your life with that sort of negative energy. And I swear to God, it is, it is literally fatal. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is the most soul crushing thing in the world to find yourself and you will find yourself 
and I, and I speak from experience here, you find yourself rooting for bad things to happen mm -hmm. because that's going to prove you right. Uh, and it's, it's, just a, it's just a crappy way to live. Yeah. Well, is there a timeline in which you see Bitcoin succeeding at all? Like what? Like it's, uh, what, what I'm trying to. Mean, what do you mean succeeding? Do, do you mean that I can trade it and I can make money from it? It's now. You know. I mean, hell yeah, you can you can make money. Not even Bitcoin. Well, I'm talking about route around the state and successfully route around the state by taking possession of your own UTXOs and sending them without any being able to be censored. So the, the scenario which you laid out a little bit earlier was taking ex so, taking control of exchanges and basically creating uh, uh, a derivative that people have access so, to. So, so I w I w I w what I would say is that I do not see any scenario in which what you are describing can be achieved without also the use of guns and bullets and blood. Why is and, that? And because the, the whole reason that governments exist, this, the, the whole reason that governments exist is to tax, mm -hmm. right? And and it and 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 that 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 is the existential. It is it is it is existential to governments to control the money, the form in which those 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 taxes are paid and can be can be, can be levied. And and if you are saying, I am opting out of that system. I am routing around you. The government says you are my enemy. Which government, though? Uh, the the government of of whatever piece of land in which you are living. So, yeah. So, do you do you see a future in which governments around the world have swift coordination to do this at the same time? Because that is probably what's what's needed if you want to shut down and neuter Bitcoin to the to the extent that you're you're talking about. So. And that's I, I get people who say that, and and it's just like what 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 world are you living in? <laughs> what do you mean? What what world? So 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 you're going to you know pick up and move to Belize? No, it's right? not. A, I, I mean, I mean, I know lots of guys. You know, I, you know, one of the, the the great when I look back at my life, I think, thank God, internet gambling didn't exist when I was in college, right? Mm -hmm. Because because my life would have gone down a very different path. A very different, and I'd probably be in Belize right now, and yeah. and and making sure that when I get a connecting flight to Europe, I don't, you know, I don't land it. I'm not on a plane that might touch down in Miami. Mm -hmm. right? Honest to God, that's that, I think that's where my life would have gone. But w when you talk about oh, we're going to be kind of sovereign man, right? And and and, and I'm and I I don't need the the nation state, and I can go from here to over there. It's like th this. That that's the that's the the belief of someone who grows up in a in a in a in a, in a that's the belief of, of an orchid, right? Who who believes that the that the greenhouse they've grown up in is 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 the world, right? Mm -hmm. That ain't the world. Uh, it it doesn't require coordination. It just requires one big country. It requires the United States saying no, nope, no, nope, we we're we're gonna we're gonna do a little more stick. I think they're gonna go with the carrot route. Right, mm -hmm. whether it's Libra or something else, you'll you'll come up with basically state-sponsored "quote unquote" coins that are just electronic cash, right? And 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 and, and you don't you don't need, and, and they will reject anything that's censorship resistant. The whole goal is for it to be censorship embracing. But so I, so I don't get this that, that oh I'm just going to pick up stakes and I'm going to move to. You're going to move somewhere? No, I'm not going to move anywhere. The The argument would be that uh, the U.S. is clamping down would be an opportunity for, for some other jurisdiction that is not happy with the state of maybe the U.S. dollar being the reserve currency of the world or the petrodollar uh, being... No, no, no. There, there, there's no jurisdiction in the world other than Iran, right, which is also launching their own state-sponsored coin, I hear, right? You know, how did that work out for Switzerland, right? So, so Switzerland used to be that place, Right, Switzerland used to be that place, and the the the, the fact is there is no you know, Switzerland got the message pretty quickly right over the last ten years is that okay those days are just gone they're they're just gone I wish I, I wish they still existed 
the coyote in me wishes there was there was that this still existed, well, but they don't. That's what disheartens me a little bit. About, I know is that B- Bitcoin, and specifically the code part of it and the distributed nature of it, make it so that it, it is imp- almost impossible to clamp down due to. It, yes, you it can be- bury it in your backyard. You can not even that, but like you can't go house to house and stop people from running nodes. It would be logistically very arduous. I, and no need to. And so you think it can just be complete, completely neutered with a carrot and a stick, carrot or a stick. Mostly carrot, right? Because because it'll become part. I really think in five years. Is this a future we want, though? Like, do of we? Of course not. Then how of do we? This is not the future we want. Then how do we? How do we get a better? Like this seems very stop dystopian. Stop playing in the world of money. Mm-hmm. Stop playing in the world of money and apply this positive energy and this technology, right, to applying problems of distributed trust for identity away from money. Well, that's you again, it, you can't separate it from money. That's the incentive that makes it run. No, no, I, I know you keep using this word incentive, like you like. You why? Why would people? There, there are lots of incentives in this world other than money. Are there though? I, I, and so, absolutely. Yeah, it's a security. Yeah, and James is. James is jumping in here too. But yeah, so the argument Bitcoiners would make is to have this distributed system, you need people to be incentivized to run the code, to plug in a miner. And the incentive for that is the token, is the money. And then from there, you can um, you can so start I'll, I'll building. Go back and, I'll go back and use Wikipedia as my example, right? I, but I, Wikipedia I, can be shut down at any moment. So no, my point is going to be is it's not that Wikipedia today is. I, I think you could absolutely run Wikipedia on a on a distributed network that was that was censorship resistant. How how would you how would you how would you incentivize miners to secure that network? I I'm not going to pay them, or I'm going to I'm going to 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 ask people to donate money to pay the miners. And what like, currency are you going to pay them in? I'll pay them in dollars. I'll pay them in anything. What if that gets care. sanctioned? What if that gets neutered? What it, like wiki, or let's let's go to another uh, uh, wiki, uh, WikiLeaks. So, so, so that's so a perfect this is, example. This is, this is what I've tried to build the this epsilon theory community around, mm-hmm. right? Which is that I believe, right? In the same way that 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 you've that I'll call it a civic religion, right? How does what incentivizes people to uh, build? churches or to, to spread a, uh, a, a creed and a faith, right? It's not the incentivization of, oh, I'm going to make money from this. It's just not. And, and my belief is that the civic religion, the civic faith that I have, again, in these small L liberal virtues, right? The virtues of an autonomy of mind, a, a, a freedom of association and speech for myself and my children, I think that there is a motivating spirit around promulgating and securing those liberties, which is absolutely as strong as the desire to make money. Right? So, you, so you ask, how am I going to incentivize this? I'm incentivizing it in the same thing that is driving this 100,000 person strong community I've got in Epsilon theory now, which is that it's like-minded people who care about that autonomy of mind and recognize that we are besieged by what I like to call the nudging oligarchy and the nudging state, by a community of people who want to exercise clear eyes and full hearts, and that's incentive enough that's my belief. No, and I, I drop the mic. I believe no. I believe that. Like I would like that as well too. But again, like wh- who's going to build these systems? Like and and why are they going to build it? And how are they going to fund it? And that's and again, you you talk about like don't do f- finance, don't go money, don't go after money. And do you think this could possibly be a, uh, a bias of your experience and maybe uh, like your your previous experience in mortgage backed securities and, and observing that and other financial phenomenons in your lifetime may have jaded you to the opportunity. I, 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 mean, of I mean, look, one, one man's bias is another man's belief, mm-hmm. right? And I, I w- it, it, but it, but it is my belief, right? It, it, and, and, and all I can do is, is, is 
say it to you as as uh, authentically as I can because it's, it's an authentic belief. I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you th this because I think there's something in it for me. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this as, um, as, as like you, someone who's thought about this a lot and, 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 I'm, and I'm not saying that I'm the, the sole repository of, 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 of knowledge on, on any of these subjects. Right? What, what, what I am saying is that this is my true and authentic belief, which I'm presenting to you mm -hmm. without, um, um, you know, ulterior motive. No, no. That, right. I love that we're having, like, I love this conversation. Oh my God, and yeah. it's, no, it's something Bitcoiners need to hear Am more I jaded? Of. Absolutely I'm jaded. Mm -hmm. Because I have seen so many coyotes have their lives freaking ruined. Ruined. Mm-hmm. Seeing their 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 families ruined, it, and you say, "Oh, these are first world problems." Yeah, I, I get that, but we're in the first world. We're in the freaking first world, so let's get over <laughs> that, right? Especially in this. I room. have seen lives ruined, and and I feel that the 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 powers of nudging are growing, are growing. And 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 they're and, suffocating. And and, and 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 it and it feels. I feel Cassandra-like, right? To say, okay, I, I think I see where this is going, guys, and nobody's believing me. And I understand why you don't believe me because we're coyotes and we want to make money. And 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 I wish and I wish it were true, uh, but I but I really don't think it is. Yeah. Oh, are we ever going to turn Ben Hunt? Um, no, it's uh, you've turned. You've, 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 it's, it's not a matter of turning, right? I, 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 it, it, it's that I don't believe that the end all and be all of human behavioral incentives are based on making money. Um, I don't. I don't either. I, it's a strong incentive, I would argue. Yes, of course. So earlier you said money is not part of your identity, um, and, it, and it's a small part. It is absolutely part of my identity. It's a small part. Mm -hmm. Small part of my small identity. part of your identity, but yep. And so, so here's another thing that Bitcoin is arguing: like sound money, and Bitcoin being a sound money in particular, is that it would help us get back to sort of uh, a quasi metric system for money and value, and, and having uh, under the the free why why are you embracing right the the this again the the role of the the the, the gold person, right? Why? Wait, because again, going back to representing your identity, I think it is imperative because it may not represent be as big a part of your identity as you think, but it represents uh, time that you have expended, in energy that you have expended, money does in particular, and it it represents that may not be identity, but it represents the amount of work that you have expended in your life at some point, and that's what I like. That's what's drawn me to Bitcoin is not yes, obviously we want to make money. On top of it being censorship resistant, freedom enabling, I do think what yeah you don't want it to be stolen from you essentially in the form of inflation exactly yeah I, I, and that's you're, you're so you're having part of your past identity stolen from you diluted if you will um, in this current system I, I, I'm I'm with you and I and I and I don't mean to make fun of gold world you know I said earlier you know I, I speak from experience right I shit I believe in gold too right not I don't want to go back to a gold standard. Right, you you talk about the kind of metricization, but but I but I, I think the search for uh, behaviorally inflation resistant things, whether it's gold or Bitcoin, I, I, again I get it, I I, I really I really do. There is a place for it. I've I've never been one of these guys. Oh, Bitcoin goes to zero. Bitcoin's beanie babies. You know, mm -hmm. you know that's uh, give me give me a fucking break, right? Uh, what what I am saying though is that that ship has sailed, people. Right, the the ship of fiat currency and and governments controlling money in this in this in this this framework of fiat, and soon going now to electronic fiat and electronic cash, the ship has sailed. Right, so so the the our 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 goal here, right, is not to, you know storm the, the the bridge of the ship 
and you know take it by force and 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 you know turn the ship back around and let's go back into that port of sound money no the, our, our our goal here is we're on this ship right and so our goal is to keep those principles of freedom and sovereignty and autonomy alive in ourselves and our pack this is what i mean that, that we have the ability to 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 join together it's a civic religion right and, and it is not relying on any you know old man with a beard up in the sky it's relying on us and and it and is something that we can then keep and maintain for our pack and our children and their children and that's it's the power of a movement as opposed to the power of a of a of a political party mm -hmm. right this this is a bottoms up thing not a top down thing and and it and it's the most powerful thing in the world and there's an energy and a technology and a you know brain power and money in this community to make it happen which is why i like being on podcasts like this because it gives me a chance <laughs> to talk to that community so you think we can make it happen absolutely <laughs> Uh, of course I do. So, I wouldn't be here if I so didn't. let's get into this. So you you just talk about the ship. We're on a ship. It's yeah. not turning around. Is the, the ship, ship the, is the ship the Titanic though? Um, and so let's talk about the macro landscape. Do we need Bitcoin so, as sort of a, 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 a steam valve that can release some of the pressure of what looks to be the inevitability? No, of see, see, see. Unfortunately, I, th I think you've got it right in terms of the steam valve, but but uh, but uh, but it's not a steam valve the way you think it is. The, so the the road you are going down. And, and, and again, I say this from an outsider's perspective, is the same to take on the same steam valve role that gold has played, right? So that so that if if gold bugs did not exist, government would have to invent them, mm -hmm. right? It gives a place for disgruntlement to exist, right? It's it's a it's a it's again you are pegged you're in a safe place it's a safe place to warehouse the disgruntled right if if you're in the government so it's a steam valve in the sense that it's safe you're not going to be taking up guns right against it's the government and and we're going to put you in a role where you say yeah we're a store of value and 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 that's fine you get you'll get you'll get a pat on the head and and you know as soon as you go you leave the room everyone is left in the room will go <laughs> right which is what which is the attitude towards gold today that's going to be the attitude towards bitcoin so it's a steam valve but not in the way you think well would you agree that bitcoin and bitcoiners are better equipped to to bring their vision of the world into fruition than gold bugs because gold has literally been neutered by centralization physical centralization of supply and and bitcoin sort of avoids that inherent centralization uh, risk that exists with physical gold. So, so, so yes and no. What, what, what I would tell you, though, is that um, what I call gold true believers have been fighting this fight for a lot longer than you have. Oh, and, I know. And, and, and the gold true believers, when I talk to them about this, about the way they've been ghettoized, the way they've been relegated into a socially acceptable role of disgruntlement right they get it they 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 get it and 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 i don't think bitcoiners get it yet they're 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 so excited that oh we're a store of value we're like digital gold and it's like oh, don't be excited about this really don't don't be because there's there's so much more that this technology could be achieving oh. than trading it, which I, I get it. We all want to make money. Trade it. Fine. Good. Go. Right? Just like you can trade gold. But but the but 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 burying putting gold in your safe deposit box. By the way, did you know there there that, that some banks are no longer allowing you to keep gold in your safe deposit box? Well, Italy's raiding the safety deposit box, aren't they? So, so yeah. th th this is all towards a move towards Central moving towards electronic cash. Yes. Right. Censorship embracing cash. And what I'm telling you is this is Caesar's business. Render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. And and we, we have there's so much we can accomplish by resisting Caesar outside of what is his. Because we 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 have let Caesar take over so much that doesn't belong to Caesar's. Money belongs to Caesar. All right, good, fine, have it. There's a lot that we've given up to Caesar, and I damn well want to take that back. 
Yeah, not, you're. I mean, we're you're preaching to the choir here. I think money, money. I am, and I'm not right because 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 you. I, I I and I know that it's so hard to let go of this notion of I can have the money too, and 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 the and the and the. The tough love I'm I'm I'm, I'm giving to you here. I is love the tough love. Is is you can't have the money. I'm sorry, but the, you 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 can't have the money. The problem with this conversation. Eric, James, thank you. Uh, hi, freaks. Um, ben, um, Marty's pack uh, goes by freak. So <laughs> love sort it. of sort of love equivalent it. there. One of the frustrating parts about this conversation, at least um, this part of the conversation for me, is that I think the substrates of Bitcoin and gold are fundamentally different. You talk about um, the government saying, okay, yeah, bury it in your backyard. I think for me, the big difference is that Bitcoin can be teleported to somebody else's backyard immediately. And so there's a, that feature makes it into sort of a, a substrate for value transmission that gold could never even have. I get it. You know? You're right. You're right. It's better. It's better. It's, it's better than gold. Right. For, for, for that reason, I can think of other reasons too. Right. Uh, but you're in the same. You're. You're. It's. It. That's a difference. That's a. That's a difference of of degree or attribute, not a not a not a difference in in category, right? So 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 what what I what I think is is that is that the the way in which Bitcoin is co-opted is to a introduce a more narrative friendly censorship embracing coin. I think that's coming. I think Libra is the first of many. Right, that are that are coming down the pat, the pike, and then I think the the, the second piece of this is to uh, relegate Bitcoin and in any sort of censorship resistant store of value into this category to tell you who you are. Right? I I know who you want to be. Right, you want to be the the way to route around the state and the state's money, and and you are by being told, oh, you're a store of value, you are being relegated to a category that does not allow you to route around. Instead, it's, it's a category that, that creates of you a socially acceptable disgruntlement. Yes, and so the store of value narrative and framing uh, in particular, I think that's just a product of the timeline of Bitcoin and where we are right now. So I'd say this a lot in the newsletter and on the podcast is, like if Bitcoin is to be money, it should be a store of value. Like eventually, it'll be a store of value, a medium of exchange, a unit of account, and a unit of account. And just you're not going to get that out of the box at once. Like you're not going to have a perfect money because money you have to come to agree that it is a particular monetary good is is good for the double coincidence of once problem. So yes, while Bitcoin may be a store, of, it may be market and rightfully so is better use case as a store of value than a medium of exchange now because uh it sending Marty, at, sending Marty, at the protocol Marty, once you go into the store of value world it's a one way street you can't come back from that into why not? well there's exchange. there's because i'll tell you why because i'll tell you why if you think i am i am preserving and saving value here in 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 gold or what have you and and now i'm going to turn around i'm going to i'm going to spend that on a cup of coffee what what well, well, why, 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 why would I do that? Because you need to, you need to drink coffee. You need to eat. So, but but my point is that, is that my my investments, the things that that I that I am investing in, because I think that they are going to, so so, inv in, investing in the stock market is another way to try to uh, preserve value, to to do something where okay, uh, if there's an inflation, if there if 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 that's hitting at my my cash. Right, mm -hmm. I'm going to buy a uh, a cash flowing real world company. I want to I want to buy you know a fractional ownership share in those cash flows, because I believe if I pick the right companies that that company they can grow their cash flows at least as fast as and if they've got pricing power more quickly than the 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 hit that my currency takes in the form of inflation. Right, so when I make an investment like that then that, that's its purpose. Its purpose there is to preserve my wealth, like you were talking before. I've, I've worked my whole freaking life for this and spent you know, years and years, and I'll be damned if I'm going to let you know, just 
some printing press and you know government take that away from me mm -hmm. okay. well all right if i've got to cash in my investment because i've got to freaking live i've got to pay the rent i get it right but you're not going to go to to you know a store of value to become a medium of exchange any more than somebody who's got you know a couple of you know gold bars in a safe deposit box goes in and says oh well i you know i need to you know pay the rent this way i'm going to shave off some gold trade it in and get some and, and trade that in for, for for what i'm doing going into that 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 store of value world i say it's impossible let's just say it makes it extremely extremely difficult right to move it back to a medium of exchange because well, the purpose is very different yes the purpose is different but it could be both, right? If the if the monetary supply is not being expanded and the ability to be both is, again, unique against gold. Like nobody's going to bring a gold bar and start shaving it off. That's in that's not practical. Bitcoin, on like layer two, like lightning, you can you can send Satoshis. You can send a fraction of, of a Bitcoin. No, I, I, I know it, I know there's a practicalness to it. It's, it's like James was saying, yes, it, it's also easier to, you know, move it from one yard to another. It's easier to to shave little bits of it off. I, so stipulated, right? My, my point's, again, a, a category differential, but right? What about monetary history? Like gold was used as a medium of exchange and a store of value throughout history for 4,000 years. Well, why are we... You're, <laughs> why are you doing this? Why, why are you doing this? So, so that, again, that ship has freaking sailed Right. And 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 if if there was some risk that the government perceived that, oh, my God, this could be an alternative to the, the people start taking the cash. Right. So so that's, you know, oh, people start taking this as an alternative or perf or worse, preferring it to taking dollars. Right. Well, th that's when you get the jackboot. Right. That's when you get. All right. Sorry. The, all these exchanges are shut down. Yeah. And, now, and it's like just like you did with gold, just like you did with gold. And this is something Bitcoiners are very upfront about, and very. This is on the top of at least some of the most uh, sort of thoroughly thinking Bitcoiners that I know. Is that everybody's thinking of a state actor? Everybody's thinking of the final boss and how to fortify the system and get to a, a level of decentralization. But, but Marty, think about what you're saying here. What you are saying is, gosh, I'm going to be sitting pretty when. The world freaking ends. Right? This is what I mean by negative. <laughs> I don't want energy. the world to end. Well, well, you want it to end enough, right? So that dollar. So we have to go back to some, you know, quote unquote, sound money standard. Well, right. It, and and when, when when you think about the deflationary shock that would be required for that, right? It it means that. <laughs> you, you, you know the the average house price in America would be you know five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, right? That that that's what you're talking about, and 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 that that is a deflationary shock of unparalleled proportions, right? But that's what you're saying. Okay, if if that happens, I win, and and again, I'm telling you that is such a miserable way to go through life. Mm -hmm. It is such a miserable way to go through life. Well, this is where I get. So I don't. I'm not praying for the end of the world or the end of the financial system, having worked in it and looking at it and looking at you know, where it seems that it's going with mon modern monetary theory, like more money printing. It's like what, like I think this is, Bitcoin is completely necessary in our day and age because without it, we are just going to drift on the ship towards a dystopian future that nobody wants. And um, it's... Ugh. So, so we're we're in complete agreement about where the ship is going. Yeah, and 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 what I'm asking for. So, and it's a hard. It is a hard ask. It's a tough ask. I, I'm saying that there are ways to change the our society on the ship. Right. That that we're we're that we're not going to storm the bridge and get the captains to 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 stop sailing us in a particular direction, but if we can change the way we think and hear the captain's announcements over the loudspeaker, right? That that is what changes everything, right? There, there. So this this, 
you know, when I, when I talk about these small L principles of liberalism, it's talking about basically the Scottish Enlightenment. You know, you know it's guys like Adam Smith and, and, and guys like that who, who weren't, you know, laissez-faire, you know, call of the wild, you know, kind of guys. There's a role for government and, 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 and you, you, you need all that, right? But, but one of those, those Scottish Enlightenment guys, a real patriotic guy right he, he said you know i'd rather i'd rather i care not who writes the laws of a country if i can write the songs mm-hmm. and what i'm saying is let's write the songs i like that let's write let's write the songs let, let's 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 change our society in the way that a civic religion can change the society uh in in a, in a way that has i think uh a lot of historical examples of success in a way that challenging Caesar over money does not. Okay. Ah. All right. The last question on Bitcoin and money, like what is the future of, of money then? Like, is money just destined to be the state controlled tool that steals from you over time? Yes. Yes. Ah, that's so pessimistic. <laughs> I, like I say, it's 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 tough love, mm-hmm. right? And 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 I wish it were otherwise. But for it to be otherwise requires you to to do something I don't want to wish on anybody, which is the guns and bullets route. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's heavy. No, it's, this has been great. Um, getting this country. I mean, as a Bitcoiner, somebody writes about it every day, talks about it every week. It's uh it's important to have these tough conversations. I am still optimistic that it's possible. Good. I'm glad. I wouldn't have it and, any uh, other way. Honestly, Marty, it's been fantastic being here. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to come on. I, I really well, appreciate Well, I have it. one more topic to talk about uh, if you if you are willing to indulge. Um, another way that you took back your autonomy is something I'm just fascinated about because you shared this, reshared this article on the 4th of July is you decided to homeschool your kids. And uh, one thing that really stuck out to me, out to me in that article in particular, that, that newsletter in particular, uh, was the fact that you said that the amount of stress that was lifted off your shoulders immediately just because of the time you were able to save each day. So what, Not off my shoulders, right? right you, off my, off my kids' children, shoulders. Yes. Off, off my children's shoulders. And, and, and first of all, let me say, when, when I say we decided to homeschool, that's an entirely a royal we. Mm-hmm. Right? I do so little of the actual work ar- around this. It, it's, it's my wife doing a lot of the, the, the work. And it's, and it's a work, again, that, that is shared in a community, right? It's finding like-minded families, so we're not religious wackos, right? We're not, um, you know, unschoolers, right? Uh, it's a belief in a, I'll call it a, a classical education, and you pool re- your resources and you hire the chemistry teacher, right? It, it's, a, it's a movable feast where you're playing this sort of active role. It's, it's, it's where you are acting in partnership with your local school. They're not the enemy. The, the, your local schools are great, right? And, and, and I don't begrudge a thing about public education, right? I, I don't begrudge the taxes I pay. Hell, I'd pay more. Don't tell anyone I'd pay more. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and we had a luxury of being able to go down this path. It was the best thing we ever did, right? It's a luxury because of the just the the my, my my kids were up for it you know we had a family situation that allowed us to do it it's not for everybody right either by aptitude or just you just can't swing it you just can't make it work but what everyone can do is play an active participatory role in their children's education and realize you're not sharing responsibility with the state when you send your kids off to school it, it, this is not a, a joint venture in child raising between you and the government, right? It's your responsibility all the time, mm-hmm. all the time. And, and playing that sort of active role and, and understanding, yeah, you know what? It, it, it's tough. It's difficult. This is your job. That, that changes everything. Yeah, how changes you, everything. How do you even go about like structuring a curriculum? Is it is it do you see what your your kids are interested in and sort of push them in a certain direction or? Well, it, it's it's a it's it's a couple of things. It is first of all there there's so many resources available uh, online today that that, that make this uh, possible. Second, and this is really I found in, only true in the United States, there is 
much less of a look askance and a, and a social um, uh, penalty that you pay from homeschooling in the U.S. than you do in other countries. Uh, you can homeschool in other countries. It's not, there is a path though where your homeschooling can absolutely be, and in, in, in my view, should be a college preparatory path, right? So, so, so colleges today, it's, it's not weird. It's not looked at so unusually. It's, 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 it's part of the, the, the road there, right? So uh, it's, it is it is so much easier today than you know any decade or you know in the past to to homeschool your kids. Um, it, and look, you can go back and forth. We we know lots of parents who you know the homeschool for a couple of years, say middle school, because middle school is a crappy experience for everyone. Oh, it's terrible. And Imagine then, moving to a new town and oh my grade. god, right? It's terrible. And then you you know you 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 go back to the local school for high school. You can go back and forth. Like I say, the, the, the local public schools are not the enemy, right? They're an ally in this. They really are. And, and so it's, it's, it's a matter of, of taking that active involvement in your child's education all the time, not just when they're home, right, but, but all the time, and structuring that mix and that curriculum that works for your family. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that, that's all it is. And... So if you don't mind me asking, like what, what were your, your daughters drawn towards and to learn about each have so, different so interests? It's, and it's, it, it is a, a class, again, I'll call it a classical education, mm-hmm. right? Right. Meaning that it is, you know, you know, the, it's, 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 it's all the usual subjects, right? And, and yet you take all the AP classes, you, 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 you but you're doing it in a participatory way. You're doing it in a way that allows the families in these cooperatives, right? There's a series of co-ops that you can you, you join and you find get like-minded families. You either hire teachers in certain subjects. Families have have, have ability. So 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 my wife is a lawyer, right? So she teaches the debate class of these homeschoolers and. You know, as I was high school, I, I didn't think anything about debate. That just seemed like, you know, just just something weird to do. Man, it's been just fantastic. They've they've won the you know the state championships and the these teams. It, 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 and I find it so useful, particularly for uh, for for young women, for girls, right? To 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 learn critical thinking and critical speaking, right? The ability to get up and you know argue with you know these kind of mansplainer boys in training which <laughs> and 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 hold their own of this so so what you end up with in these classes these debate classes for homeschoolers are children of different ages because that's the other thing you get a homeschooling experience it's not let's warehouse you know 30 or 40 13 year olds all together one group and kind of herd them from room to room for most of the day right it's 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 children of different ages right boys and girls all working together to uh, argue with each other and develop their critical thinking abilities. I, I mean, people always ask, you know, homeschooling, well, you know, how do they get socialized? You know, aren't, don't you worry about socialization of your kids? And my answer is, you know, don't you? Right? Right? <laughs> right? right. And, 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 and the socialization that happens in, in, a, in, a, in a group of you know, multiple ages, boys, girls, different backgrounds because you also get a lot of different class backgrounds in, in homeschooling. You, you get people who got a lot of money. You got people who got no money. And, and, and you, you put that group together and they're all there to develop critical thinking and reading abilities. You know, that's the kind of socialization that I sure get, 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 can get behind. Mm-hmm. That's similar like the Montessori uh, sort of structure just, allocated yeah there, the there are a lot of elements around this and yeah. again this is you know nobody's inventing cold fusion here <laughs> right, right? These, these are ideas that whether i'm, I'm talking about it when it, when it comes to investing in finance or whether i'm talking about you know our families and our political lives you know shit man we're, we're not we're not smarter than socrates and we're not wiser than jesus right and and so you've got you know the the, the core thing of socrates was know thyself mm-hmm 
Yeah, right on, brother. I, I mean, know thyself, right? And 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 keep that 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 north star of your own autonomy and your own identity, right? And Jesus is the golden rule, right? Do it, do unto others as they would do unto you, right? Think cooperatively, right? Yeah, yeah. That's 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 how society is made. You you know, just apply those two rules. It's it's like what I call you know from Friday Night Lights, right? It's clear eyes, know yourself, mm -hmm. full hearts, do unto others as they would do unto you. Can't lose. Mm -hmm. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. It's true for high school football in Texas, and, it, and, it, and it's true for our lives today. It really is. It's a good motto to live by. It's, uh, I've blown through that series many times in the past. No, it's true. It's, it is. And that's what I think draws us to Bitcoin, pointing to James here next to me, is that Bitcoin really does force you to know who you are in, in many aspects because you have to take control of it and um you have to make that decision am i willing to take control of this and uh i think yeah look look i love it so make money with it i'm not saying don't make money i'm not saying live like a you know freaking monk and, so, and give your money. make some money with it right? I want, and then and the and i don't want to make some money i want to make money we want to make I, new I know, money and that's where we disagree that's yeah. where we disagree if you make money you're getting into caesar's business and you are going to be either taken out on the street and shot or you're going to be co-opted, and it, or you're going to be turned into the the, the safe, grumpy old man yelling at clouds. Mm -hmm. And and what I'm saying is, make money. Don't make the money, but 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 make profit. yourself some money, right? Profit. Make some profit, right? Trade it, do all this, and and use that for good, right? Use use it to develop this technology in in a, in a modern way. Right, that, that we can really change the the, the, the culture of this, this ship we're sailing on. Yeah, this is uh, poetic that we're in Chainco Labs, uh, a company started by two men who made a lot of money. And Absolutely, are God bless towards. them. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's been a pleasure. Should we end on your announcement about the site moving yes, away from ads? Yes, yeah. So, so you know, like I say, it's 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 been an evolution for me, not in my my views about again the Karnak fatal flaw in Bitcoin. It's been absolutely an, an, an evolution for me to get to know the, the, the people in this community and just be in awe of that positive energy and that, that, that you know, shared coyote spirit, frankly. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, we're, we're making some changes on, on Epsilon Theory. We're getting rid of the ads on the website, right? We're, we're going to move even more in the direction of, you know, Pay what you can, and, so it, and we're going to build this community, right? And and you know, we want to live. We want to make a good living, so so we're going to charge subscriptions, but we're not going to you know put up a total wall on this content. But part of what we're doing is we, we will start taking Bitcoin, right, for for subscriptions and for for moving forward in in, in our mission, right? So we're gonna we're gonna set up a node, whether you know, some BTC BTC pay server thing and. Uh, We'll have that up and running in a in, in a week or two. Well, it's great to hear. You're using it as a medium of exchange. You crazy, crazy. I guy. know, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Ben, uh, shave off your bar gold, your bar of gold. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for so much for coming in. Anytime, um, Marty. Thank you for what you're doing. Uh, it's it's f extremely flattering to hear that from you. You're, again, your writing is is profound in my mind, and it, it it really helps develop a perspective of how the world works and. Thank you for doing what you do as well. You got it, man. Peace and love, freaks. <laughs>